It's 2003 all over again with the <laughs> rom-com Your Place or Mine, starring Reese Witherspoon and Ashton Kutcher. Uh, Alonzo, tell us about it. It's on Netflix today. What is it? It is on Netflix today. Yes, there's a definite turn of the millennium feel to this one. I hope that you get what you want out of this trip. Find yourself a hottie. Maybe get waxed. Waxed? Oh, waxed. Waxed. Oh. So Reese Witherspoon and Ashton Kutcher play best friends. They hooked up once. He wasn't ready to commit, but they immediately, immediately became super besties. Even when he left Los Angeles and moved to New York, they talk all the time. She is his only friend, I think gets mentioned at one point. Obviously, they belong together, but it takes them, you know, the, the better part of two hours to figure that out. In the meantime, she has to go to New York um, to take a class for this job that she really hates. And uh, he, she was supposed to go hang out with him, but then her sitter drops out. And so... So that she can still make the trip, he goes to uh, L.A. So they basically swap homes and lives for a bit. And it, you know where this is going. You know where all of this is going. <laughs> and much like the early 2000s, you know, how to lose a guy in 10 days movies that were always stolen by the likes of like Judy Greer or Parker Posey or whatever. The MVPs here are Zoe Chow and uh, Tignataro, who spin lead into gold and and turn this into something that's a lot of fun. This is written and directed by Aileen Brosh McKenna, who is a, a, a veteran of this kind of movie. She did 27 dresses. She wrote 27 dresses. She wrote Devil Wears Prada. Um, and there are glimmers of occasional things going on here, but the central uh, story is so hard to swallow uh, and the, the the a lot of the character details are so nonsensical. Ashton Kutcher's character thinks about uh, his father when he hears the cars, so he listens to nothing but the cars, and I mean nothing, including drive when he is. Driving. driving yes and, and at and that point in the movie i'm like is this a parody <laughs> i'm like there's no way they mean this it's so on the nose it has to be like self-referential yeah, that's no, how i felt it. about forrest gump yeah no and it's not even <laughs> not even the car's deep cuts like he's listening to the hits all the time yeah it is tricky to do this kind of movie where people are spending most of the film apart mm -hmm. and yet it's supposed to be a love story between them uh and they don't quite thread that needle and just everything else just feels so gimmicky and contrived. And this is, this is a really disappointing. There's just nothing to this movie, nothing to either of these characters. They yeah. are individually so appealing and they have no chemistry with each other at all. As you say, part of the problem is that they are apart for the vast majority of the time. And so the only times that they do interact are over like FaceTime and in like, you know, split screens, split screens. as we have seen in rom-coms for decades, sure. you know, they um, recreate the pillow talk bathtub split screen. Yeah, so there's definite homages here in that regard, but like, it only goes to remind you of better movies from before. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days because this reminds me of one of those movies like The Holiday, like Something Has Got to Give, that they mm -hmm. play on heavy rotation at Dry Bar. When you go to Dry Bar, <laughs> you get a blowout. They have monitors, and you can like absentmindedly just kind of watch them, you know, an old, safe, comfortable rom com while you're having sure. your free glass of champagne and getting your, your soft your beach to waves, <laughs> getting ready for your girls' night. So <laughs> this feels like that. Like it's just, it's so like agreeably superficial and just instantly forgettable. And I just feel like everybody here is capable of more. Like what, what about this cried out to Reese Witherspoon who can, you know, is this her production company? She yeah. can say yes to the absolute best material at this point. What about this made her want to do this? There's nothing to her character. She's like uptight single mom. She has this 13 year old son, played by Wesley Kimmel, who is Jimmy Kimmel's nephew. She's just super overprotective of him. And, you know, there's like post-it notes everywhere. And she's worried about all these allergies. It's all these like modern mom cliches. Yes. We're not all like that. And then he's a total cliche too. He's like slim suits and commitment issues and yes. this spacious loft overlooking the Brooklyn Bridge. And, you know, when they swap lives, will they secretly fall in love with each other? Like, was it there all along? Of course the journey is the destination. <laughs> 
<laughs> but there's like nothing on the way there. There's a hot guy who is a publisher played by yes. Jesse Williams with whom she has what is supposed to be a spark, but their conversations are so banal where they're like one upping each other on really obvious literary references. Yeah. Ooh, you read books. I read books. Ooh, Edith Wharton. I know she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's that. And then they touch on some things that might have hinted at more interesting characters here with some dark sides and some problems. Like mm -hmm. he's Steve sober. Zahn. What's that? <laughs> like Steve Zahn's stalker gardener. Right. There's a whole weird thing that he's so wedged in. Steve Zahn yeah. is the, the gardener who's so chill that his name is literally Zen. Ashton Kutcher references the fact that he was in rehab a couple times and yeah. he goes to a bar, which is Jar, by the way. Did you notice that? The oh, I didn't notice. Jar. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, and, you know, he he's sober now. And like, she references some alcoholic mom. Like there's some mm -hmm. dark sides here that like they just never get into. Like it's so on the surface. Yeah. It's so boring. Thank God for Ting Nataro. But then like her and Zoe Chow both like Zoe Chow's entire raison d'etre is to like show up and be supportive of Reese Witherspoon, yes. who she's never, never met, met before. <laughs> like heard of her. Like she's this really stylish and witty party girl. Like, does she not have any other friends or even like <laughs> some part time job as an influencer? Like she has nothing better to do all day. Yeah, th this is, I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> people like to give Hallmark movies a hard time. I have seen some that are better written and smarter and funnier than this one that tread in the same kind of tropes and, uh, you know, sort of, uh, rom-com cliches. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of surprised that, that, yeah, as you say, Reese Witherspoon is, is captain of her own ship and she's mm -hmm. picking this thinking like, yeah, this is, this is the thing I want to be doing right now. And, I, you know, I, I don't know what the what the decision there was, but it wasn't great 20 years ago and it's not great now. Yeah. And then this is this is the directorial debut of Alien Brosh McKenna. She mm -hmm. is, of course, a veteran writer. She's directing for the first time, too. Creator or very... co-creator of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I've never seen that. Yeah. Um, oh. But like it all looks very like glossy and like flat and green screeny. And yeah, anyway, like, it's not good. Yeah. She is aspiring for uh, um uh, Nancy, uh Myers. Nancy Myers, but not quite getting there. No, I'm saying four. Uh, yeah, I said four and a half. It's and even like for a lazy Saturday watch, like maybe it's sufficient for that, but there's so many better options out there. Uh, yeah, you'd have to be really busy doing other things to not notice how overly long it is and how long <laughs> it takes to get even just to get the initial plot in place. It's just like, could we go with it here? Yeah. <laughs>